So this is benzene. Um, it's, it's an organic compound. So it's um, a ring of six carbons with hydrogens um, coming off each carbon. Benzene is a very interesting molecule. Its structure has six carbon atoms, each with one hydrogen atom attached to it. Um, it's used uh, as a solvent. Benzene is actually quite carcinogenic. We found out now that it actually causes cancer and it's pretty toxic. So, so we have to treat it with the utmost respect. The structure mystified chemists. How could you have six carbons and six hydrogens all in one molecule? When benzene was discovered, people didn't actually know what the structure it was. They knew it had six carbons and six hydrogens. They didn't actually know what sort of form it took. Um, and basically, it was down to somebody called um, Kekulé, who um, proposed the structure of benzene. And apparently, the structure of benzene came from a dream he had where he dreamt of a snake eating its own tail. He dreamt that a snake was biting its own tail and he developed the idea that benzene was a ring. Apparently. Or so he says afterwards. Uh, but the actual structure wasn't worked out until the 1930s when crystallography showed that it really was a flat molecule. And the um, chemist named Catherine Lonsdale, who was the first woman ever to be made a Fellow of the Royal Society, the Brit UK Academy of Sciences, she worked out the structure of benzene. The structure of benzene is a hexagon of carbons. A hydrogen comes off of each carbon. And what we have is a double bond, double bond, double bond. So we have a double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. So the way chemists often draw benzene is a, is a hexagon with a ring in the middle to show that the electrons are delocalized, as we call it, so over each carbon. They're delocalized over each carbon. And benzene is an aromatic compound. We call aromatic compounds compounds that have these sorts of structures. Michael Faraday made a um, sample of benzene early in the 19th century. And in about 1980, a bottle was found labeled Faraday's benzene. And the British company BP, who has wonderful an analytical uh, labs, analyzed benzene, Faraday's benzene, and it came out to be purer than modern benzene when you buy really high purity benzene. So everybody was a bit suspicious. Was this really Faraday's benzene? But it had 37 trace impurities, tiny impurities, that, and which they also saw. And then another bottle of Faraday's benzene was found in a different lab in London and it was analysed and it had exactly the same impurities. It was found out that the reason that Faraday's benzene was so pure is that benzene freezes at quite a high temperature. It goes solid at about 6 degrees centigrade and Faraday used crystallisation rather than the modern way of purifying it which is distillation which is much better on a large scale but doesn't give you quite such a high purity product. Um, benzene has an, an unusually high uh, melting point, so it becomes solid at 5.5 degrees. So hopefully we're going to put it in some ice and see if we can get it to go solid. Benzene has been found moderately recently, in the last 40 years or so, to be toxic. It's not an acute poison, it doesn't make you drop dead immediately, but it can promote certain cancers, particularly leukaemia. So when I was at school, People use benzene quite freely, but nowadays we wouldn't let school children or even students use it except in special precautions. I found here, this is my um, school lab book, which I did experiments about 46, 47 years ago. It's got some quite nice pictures in it. And here, there's an experiment which I did, preparation of nitrobenzene. This is reacting benzene with sulfuric acid and nitric acid. And I used 50 milliliters of benzene. That's really quite a large amount, nearly two ounces of benzene. And nowadays, this would not be allowed at all at school. So we're in our fume cupboard. So what we have here is just some ice. I put a little bit of water in it. Hopefully we can get a nice, um, nice contact between the test tube and the ice. So this is just a, a normal test tube. And what I'm going to try and do is put some of the benzene in the test tube. We may have to leave it for a little while. We'll have to wait and see. Benzene itself is not 
very spectacular looking at all. It's a colourless compound. So that's what it actually looks like. But benzene's pre uh, benzene rings are present in lots and lots of compounds. So benzene itself is toxic, but lots and lots of compounds with benzene rings in them aren't. So benzene, as I showed you, was in things like aspirin. It's in, um, there's a benzene ring in paracetamol. You'll find benzene rings in lots of compounds. Um, so, so benzene's in TNT, so it's trinitrotoluene, which is an explosive. So you'll find benzene in a lot of places. It's in an amino acid. Benzene is the simplest example of what is called aromatic compounds. I suppose because some of the uh, materials that are made from benzene have a nice smell. Nitrobenzene, which I made at school, smells a bit like almonds. And a huge number of different chemicals are based on aromatic rings, like benzene. And one of them, for example, is terephthalic acid, which is what's used in making plastic bottles. Benzene is also used um, in lead-free gasoline, lead-free petrol, because benzene burns differently from straight chains of carbon and hydrogen atoms. And so by having benzene in lead-free petrol, you can avoid the need to have lead and allow car engines still to function properly. Because otherwise, when you press the accelerator, the car starts juddering and doesn't go uphill properly. So what we have here now is the benzene in the bottom of the test tube. I'm just going to put it in the ice and hopefully we can get it to freeze. I hope this ice is cool enough. So wait and see. Benzene is um, potentially dangerous, but since it is burnt in the car engines, uh, the passengers should not really come in contact with it very much. But this is why, for example, you should not try and siphon um, gasoline out of a car by sucking on the end of a tube to get the siphon going because the benzene in it is poisonous. It is not as poisonous as the lead was before, but it's still not something that you should be taking into your mouth. Okay, so we're checking up on our benzene. We've put, um, uh, we put a little bit of benzene, we squirted a little bit of benzene from this bottle into the bottom of this test tube and we've put it in some, some, just some ice. So obviously, hopefully the ice and the water surrounding this is about zero degrees. And the melting point of benzene is about five and a half degrees centigrade. So it's actually, actually so, it should be solid in our ice. So if we have a little look at our benzene. Okay, actually, it's on its way. It's not quite, oh no, actually, no, it is frozen. Benzene is also used, somewhat strangely, for making very high purity alcohol. If you make alcohol by fermenting um, glucose in water, you get a mixture of alcohol and water and you can then start distilling it. However, when you distill it, you can only get rid of most of the water and you're still left with about 2.5% of water in the alcohol. And however much you distill it, you can never get rid of that last bit. However, if you add a little benzene to the mixture of water and alcohol, then the benzene allows you to distill off almost pure alcohol. But now you have just a trace of benzene in it. And benzene, as I've said, is quite poisonous. So this is why you should never try and drink alcohol that's used in a lab, because it will contain traces of benzene and could be very bad for you. So our benzene is, is frozen. So hopefully if I turn this upside down, fingers crossed, this frozen benzene, which freezes at five and a half degrees C.